Hello, welcome to Lunch with Andy 2023. It's January. Let's have it. Okay. So uh, we, this year we're going to have some really cool interviews with some really interesting people within the first community. And the first interview we're having this week is with Patrick Wolfenden, owner of Sword Dry Specialties and mentor on Jack in the Bot, FRC 2910. He's got a total of seven years of FRC experience, all with 2910. He was a student on the team for a couple of years, and then he's been a mentor for the past five years. Patrick's favorite first memory is the 2910's run within the World Championships in 2018. You guys went to Einstein, right? Yeah, we made it to finals. Well, yeah, actually, like, like the final finals, right? That was pretty yeah. awesome. Today, I'm eating um, some Vietnamese spring rolls. Yes, we do have Vietnamese here in Kokomo. And I think, Patrick, what are you eating today for lunch? Yeah, I'm also eating Vietnamese uh, banh mi sandwich from Yummy Deli. And yeah, we got a lot of Vietnamese up in Seattle. Is Yummy Deli one of your favorite spots? Yeah, it's like an awesome quick lunch spot. All right, so there's there's lots of things we could talk about. The game just was released uh, last Saturday. Um, we're dealing with a lot of game pieces here. You're dealing with some customers with who, who want Swerve Drive modules from SDS. But really, really, I mean, you're a, you're a first veteran now. You're a first alumni. What do you think of the game? What's your overall opinion of the game? I think the game's really cool. I like how different it is from the previous like few years of games. The two different game pieces make it interesting. They're kind of the same size, but they're like totally different shapes. And also the amount of like horizontal extension that you need to reach out to like score the game pieces onto the higher levels. Yeah, I think it makes it pretty interesting and it's a, a lot different than what we've seen in recent history. Right. That that 48 inch extension that first gives us for a robot rule is a, is going to be used a lot. And I mm-hmm. I think either either you're using a turret or you're using some kind of a pivot. Once you do that at the end of 48 inches, that's a lot of move. There's going to be a lot of arms just wailing around and <laughs> trying to place their things on put on sticks and stuff. So it'll be it'll be pretty interesting to see lots of action. We actually ran some on Sunday, some match simulations, like definitely like the middle of the field is where all the defense is going to be. And you are kind of doing those full field cycles. But yeah, once you're once you're like at the loading, the substation or the community, like you're protected, which is nice. Lots of area for protection. So so since you're a swerve expert, how do you think the swerve drive modules could be used in the game is that an effective drivetrain for this year's game i think it's pretty difficult to think of a game that swerve doesn't have some advantages in right Um, but yeah like it'll be great for aligning to the the scoring positions as well as picking stuff off from the portal how about going up on to the the charge node is that the right name the bridge the charge the, node the charge station the not, charge not station the, not the charging not, station not not yeah. right right the the bridge yeah. bridge I, yeah. i've seen some videos of success and some troubled like like people are saying the bridge is too, too hard for swerve have you seen any have you seen any of those videos and such i have i think um it's going to be totally fine yeah watching the like game videos that first provided with the field elements it seems like the real version of it actuates pretty easily and then i think some of these early videos we've seen of swerve drives trying to go up uh and having some issues like they're not full weight robots that can like push down the the ramp and stuff so i think it's going to prove stuff not to be a problem at all I agree. I, I just saw a video from the Redux team out of Illinois. I mean, they put a full weighted robot and the ang- the lead in angle on the the flappy thing on the bridge was the correct angle. They had to align themselves correctly, but they got up on the bridge without any problem. I, I didn't see a problem with it. 
So I agree with you. T- tell me about what you've seen over the past year, maybe what you've gone through as, as in a general sense with the demand you've seen for your products and what you've done in house to meet that demand. Yeah, since Sword Drive Specialty was started, we've seen like a like continuous increase in demand. Like that's not going to continue forever, but uh, yeah, I think it's because like more people are learning about Sword Drive Specialties and just more teams are wanting to get into Swerve in general. When I started the company, I it, I just had like a Tormach 440 like in my like garage and then sort of to try to keep up with demand i and grow the business i like upgraded to like an actual vertical machining center uh brother speedio i actually quit my full-time job engineering job and uh started doing sword drive specialties full-time and then this past summer it moved sword drive specialties like moved into a little shop in an industrial complex we've been ramping up a lot to try to keep up with demand but the demand has been like increasing at at least the same pace yeah was there any one significant thing that that told you you had to leave your day job to do this full time or was it a combination of things man it seems like i got to the point where like it was a kind of a no-brainer like it needed to be done i just didn't have enough time to do everything i can associate i did that just a few years ago or like 50, <laughs> but yeah, I, I can associate what that was like. Swerve Drive is a omnidirectional type of drivetrain, obviously, as are, you know, Mechanum, Omni, Kilo, Kiwi Drive, those types of things. But what specifically about Swerve Drive modules are, 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 are benefits that you see and even compared to some of those other types of omnidirectional drives? Yeah, good question. So I think the... The like main benefit of the swerve drive is it you get all the traction you would from like a normal tank drive or like west coast drive or something and you get the the like holonomic movement you can translate in any direction front back left right and rotate and then you still get all the pushing power that you would get from any other or from like a tank drive i can see that to be very advantageous this year especially like in that in that non-community zone when you're when you're cycling if someone's trying to block you you can you can kind of push through them and you can you can juke them to the side with swerve so it gives you good options yeah i think that's absolutely a, a benefit getting away from defense is like Sword drive is great at because you can accelerate really quickly in any direction and also kind of roll around people. Swerve drives actually make really good defense spots too because um, sometimes it like seems to take a swerve drive to kind of really keep up with a swerve drive. Huh. Uh, yeah, that'll be a big deal this year, I think. So those are the advantages of, uh, the advantages of swerve drive. How about the challenges? Um, what are the difficulties that teams happen to have with swerve drive modules there's a couple of the like the main one is they're more complex in order to gain like the ability to move sideways you introduce like more complexity so like each of the wheels being able to steer and turn independently kind of like you're sort of controlling like eight degrees of freedom all at once sure and the code needs to know what to do in order to point all the wheels in the right direction and stuff another kind of disadvantage of swerve is it can be a little heavier than a simpler drivetrain by the nature of it being more complex and it can also be a little bit more expensive do you have any advice on where teams can look for maybe maybe a start or hints on on programming and maybe some default code or things system areas where they can they can start learning about how co- how to code this yeah so i think um wpi lib has a uh, swerve functionality built in now so that'd probably be a good place to look and there's a lot of uh code bases like i know uh 364's base falcon swerve is um super well known at this point do you have any questions for me or do you have anything else you want to add i guess i'm curious like what kind of mechanisms you see 
as being pretty common and successful this year because it's been so long since we've seen a year with where you have to reach like so far outside the frame perimeter to score. Okay, so I think one of the decisions teams are going to make is to, to turret or not to turret. And that's going to be a hard choice. A lot of turrets are going to be homegrown. And there's there's a few out there with, with off-the-shelf modules, but a lot of turrets will be homegrown. And those aren't easy to design because you got to deal with a lot of things, the mechanics and the electrical connectivity, those types of things. I mean, there's people... You know, there's, there's slip rings out there and such, but those might help. But turreting or not turreting will be a thing. I think extensions, like I've heard people talk about pink arms already. The old 233 pink arm was a popular thing back in the mid 2000s and that team pretty much perfected it. So if, if you're looking at a powered um, telescoping arm that goes out and in, powered both ways, look up pink arm on Chief. And I think grabbing grabbing cones and grabbing cubes i've seen some really really good things from the robot in three days teams about grabbing cubes and grabbing cones and the one i liked a lot was the passive the passive grabber where they were grabbing a cone with pneumatics and then the bearings would just let the cone right itself that was pretty uh, genius also i think i think um roller claws with grabbing cones is, is a big deal we can just learn from ftc with regard to roller call cone grabbers that's that's a thing that's very popular out there i think frc can look around the corner and look at all these ftc robots out there and give them a lot of credit for really perfecting how to grab a, granted a more rigid cone but they're grabbing cones left and right right now they're going out at events so I recommend FRC teams to go look at their brethren over in FTC to figure out how to do that. So those are the things I'm thinking of when I'm looking at this from a team perspective. Yeah, I get one thing I'm particularly interested in is it seems like at higher level play, if you're kind of scoring from the top down and like near the end of the match, you kind of only have like the lower places to score that aren't worth as much the like point value of the triple climb seems to like it might be a big deal hmm. um so yeah i'm curious to see what kind of solutions teams come up with if they're really just going to try to fit like three robots up there normally or if there's some like creative ideas that people come up with to get three robots on the charge station i do think the three seconds but of disabled time between auto and telia will be i mean we know it's there but i'm just used to the robots like moving immediately uh, yeah yeah i wonder if how that's going to play out with regard to play on the bridge like coasting movement on the bridge i'll have to see what happens with how the volunteers handle this game week zero week one and such it'll be interesting to see thank you for having me on it's uh honored to be the first guest of the year with lunch with andy yeah uh, <laughs> yeah it's always good to talk well in, enjoy your lunch um i look forward to seeing you hopefully i think i'll see you in houston hopefully if not before houston sometime along the competition season for this coming year thanks patrick for your time i know you're a busy guy good luck with your season this year uh for all you who tuned in thank you for your viewing i hope to see you next week when we have Alan Gregory from Texas joining us for a new lunch with Andy next week. See you later. Be safe. Have fun. Bye-bye.